And so your results matter. You must come to that recognition that God desires that consistently from your life there be an unending effulgence of the supernatural manifestations of the possibilities of the kingdom. This is not an exclusive preserve for preachers. It is the heritage of every believer in Christ. Most people are not trained in church, so they do not know. And when you do not know, you cannot have expectation. You learned that last week. Are we together now? It is important for you to know that you are on, if it is true that you are part of this kingdom come project, your life must command results. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that my life will produce extraordinary results. One more time, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that my life must command extraordinary results. What manner of man is this, they said, that even the winds and the waves obey him. Jesus called their attention not by calling them. He called their attention by allowing for a spectacular display. There was such a manifestation of God in a man. Until then, their only consolation were prophecies of prophets and happenings before their arrival. They were full of stories of things God did. I hope you know theologically speaking that from Malachi to Matthew was about a period of 400 years. It was called a dark face in the history of the church. They never encountered God. They were completely alienated. No prophets nothing that was a resemblance of god people were allowed to shadow box their way that's why when jesus came and went to the temple they had turned the temple to a place of business because there was no power there was no light so instead of wasting the building they turned it into a marketplace and jesus made a scourge and threw them out and said have you not read that this house you see that you have turned it into a business enterprise Huh? that it shall be a house of prayer for all nations in other words the possibilities of god should tabernacle within this place I forbid you from living a fruitless Christian life. I forbid you from living a barren Christian life. Where people consistently have to keep questioning. Is it true that is the God of heaven you serve? Is it true that is the God of heaven? No, no, no. Even if you serve the devil eventually, there will be a semblance of results. At least Janus and Jambas had the ability to turn a serpent, a stick to a serpent. I reject a powerless generation. In the name of Jesus. Listen, let me tell you this. Results are very important for two reasons. Number one, they act as consolations to your Christian experience. You have been taught that our pursuit uh, for God and for spiritual things is not all about results. Our ultimate pursuit is to know him like Paul said. But, but, that in the dealings of God with men, there is a very unique consolation that results bring to people. You can serve God when you are poor, but you will serve God better when you are blessed. Is that true? You can serve God when you are stagnated in the midst of pain. But you serve God better. You, in fact, you serve God best when you have the liberty to be able to serve him freely. The Bible says, listen, it says, He that told you have asked for nothing. It says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Imagine the excellency of your spiritual life when you can import the possibilities of God and bring it to your family. Your unbelieving family that has mocked God before your face and then day one, they keep recording like a secretary. Day one, healing. Day two, breakthrough. Day three, deliverance. Day four, speed. Day five, restoration. At the end of it, they'll have to drop their pen and say, who is this God? Are you paying attention now? Yes, sir. Our evangelism is poor and we keep begging and moving around because every witness is not a valid witness until you have an evidence. I have taught you this, that when you go to the court of law, your witness may not be strong until you present an evidence. So Peter was standing before the Jerusalem council making defense of his faith and the man who was crippled was standing next to him and the people could not dispute that miracle. What evidence do you have? That becomes a backing to all your speakings. When you say God is faithful, where is the proof? Not everybody is a spiritual man. The Greeks seek for a sign. Listen, they will come to the well like the woman at the well. They will not come to the well because of Jesus. They will come to the well because of your results. Then when they come to the well, they will encounter Jesus. Now their convictions will now be greater than the results. But that which attracts is the excellency of the workings of God in your life. Look up please. How do you think people get into cultism? Have you ever seen a cultist carrying a placard and say, today we are on evangelism? Have you seen that happen? But perpetually they keep recruiting people. Why? Because of a semblance of results. Have you seen a herbalist group themselves as a team and say, we are going around Abuja or around our villages? In fact, most of the herbalists that cause mayhem are never really seen. And yet their impact cannot be denied because of results. Shout results. Let the devil hear you. Shout results. 
I'm here to provoke you tonight to shake away every excuse that has kept you down all kinds of explanations listen there are many people whose growth whose salvation is at the mercy of your results that includes your family that includes all those around you your workplace that includes the members of your church the Bible says the endless expectation of creation awaited the manifestation not the excuses Herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit when you bear much fruit that you come from a family where no one has risen and you hear these arrogant demonic people make statements like nobody will rise from your family you don't need to start jumping let your results answer that there is a cause that has tied everybody in that family that nobody will rise no matter where they go to you cannot argue with results and then you send the children of the Habalis to school on your scholarship and tell him this is a token of righteousness Jesus sends rain to the righteous and the unrighteous let your children go to school while we keep hoping for your own repentance are we together demonic appearances people go to bed in the night and cannot sleep by morning you think they've rested it was a wrestle this time it's not Jacob's kind of wrestle wrestle with demons principalities and with one decree like Jesus made over the sea peace be still and an age-long calm is restored in your family they will start looking for names to explain the supernatural like pastor like whatever it is and they are right because the Bible says they shall call you ministers of our God listen ladies and gentlemen from this night your life will begin to command extraordinary results I'm prophesying it to someone in the name of Jesus the resurrected King may your life command such phenomenal results it for as long as your life is not producing results do not rest no it is foolishness to be in a state of rest rest there means with no passion to press when your life has not produced a requisite level of results there is a labor dimension in the kingdom in prayer the labor dimension in the word that you do not rest until there is that establishment poverty all around your family and you fold your arms as if everything is all right is that the will of God Are we together arguments day and night because of money this one steals blames this one husband blames wife and you can come in as an ambassador no long salmon I come in the name of the Lord it says blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord and you calm the family down and in a moment using the tool of economy you preach a message that is sound and end all these devilish arguments once and for all next time you are going to church they will say can we come does that look to you like Micah chapter 2 it says it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain and above the hills is that true and it says nations shall run to it that they will tell one another come let us go to the house of Jacob it said for there he will teach us his ways it's important that our Christian lives stop being inert and passive no we are in an active mission revealing Jesus and if you are really interested in Jesus, this Jesus project cannot happen by folding your arms. So listen, I have given you an orientation in this ministry that when we advocate results, it's not just a mundane search to heal yourself from failure. The project is beyond proving a point that you are not a failure. No, that the program of God is result dependent. Do not downplay the problems that plague men in our world. Nobody will follow you anywhere if your life does not have results. I guarantee you. They may like you because they are related to you. They may console you out of their life. But if you want genuine followership to Jesus, it will be at an instance of results. Again, let me speak to someone. Whatever has made people run away from your Jesus, the version of Jesus you have been presenting that has been sending more people to hell because they cannot see the evidence, the workings of the Spirit, I declare from tonight, begin to command extraordinary results. Please be seated. Moses Moses that you read in the Bible watch this Moses said do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us listen very carefully it says how shall they know please help me honor Reverend Akila such a pleasant surprise blessings to you sir house on the rock just hallelujah if your life is bankrupt of results you will only create a basis for debates that will keep planting unbelief 
Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. Forget about what ignorant people say. Results are powerful. Powerful. Let me repeat again. Genuine results. Results of healing. Results of salvation. Results of favor. Find a man whose life is an expression of results. And I show you where argument comes to an end. And end with a full stop. When Jesus hung upon the cross, he made three interesting statements. Eat is finished and any devil that wants to add a comma to that statement the power of god has been guaranteed to protect that statement it is finished shame is finished disappointment finished years of crying without solution is finished yes you have to believe this there are families coming to church and once you gather yourselves to go to the house of God, here comes the mockers who come in the spirit of Sambalat and Tobias, stopping you from building what God is building and they mock at you and say, at least we are, it's very clear that we do not love Jesus. But you who is a worker in church, you who is passionate are in this season, may my God use your results to answer many in the name of Jesus Christ. That a family that you thought nothing good will come out of all of a sudden five of them in one month all get noble jobs a family where the three women are barren all of them carrying twins each as a signature that this came from heaven someone who had been left for dead suddenly like Lazarus comes back with power and vitality you tell me that will not preach a message can you preach better than that result I have taught you that results are also evangelists. There is a sermon only results can preach. Please listen to me. There is a sermon only results can preach. And while the church keeps downplaying the power of genuine results, the world keeps using results to bait many away from their passion for God. How many people start from church and end up elsewhere because results took them out of God's presence? I believe in results. Oh. I do, sir. I do. I do. When Jesus died and rose from the dead, he didn't need to go around saying, I am risen. He said, look at me. He that was dead now is alive. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came upon all of them, they said, these men are drunk with wine and Peter got, and Peter got up, cleaned himself and said, no, this is only in the morning. He said, but this is that. Prophet Joel prophesied this. This is that. Mm. This is that. That favor I was talking about, this is that. That breakthrough I was talking about, this is that. That speed that God can bring to a man, this is that. Some of you already promised your parents that in their lifetime they will see the faithfulness of God through you. Make sure that prophecy comes to pass. Make sure they do not just pass on like that. They are waiting. You told mama last year that you will not die until you see God for your years of serving the missionaries. And God has kept her alive, except that your result is not yet there. Listen, you can insist that father from tonight no more excuses. I begin to contend until my life listen when you are louder than your results men will hate you you see there is there is you are not supposed to be louder than your results in fact your results should far at it should it should um, be an amplifier of your speakings the challenge with that generation is that the ratio of the genuine results to the things we propose is so wide that the results are so small Solomon did not need to brag and make noise the excellency of his results were there and every king that came in, including the arrogant queen of Sheba when she came and went through the entire palace she said half of this was not told me that someone will come to your life and know that the anointing is at work but not know the extent until the day they have an opportunity to sit down under the grace of God upon your life they live not intimidated but inspired that a man can be this open for more of God and it will drive men to pray to fast and say Lord I desire more results are evangelists there is a sermon that only authentic results can preach. Are we together? So let me give us a charge tonight. It remains my contribution to helping everyone here to produce authentic, genuine, spiritual results. Let me capture my charge tonight in a topic I titled The Ways of God. The Ways of God. Psalm 103 verse 7 he made known his ways to Moses his acts the Bible says unto the children of Israel 
Psalm 25 from verse 4 and 6. This was a cry from David the psalmist. He says, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path. Reading to 6, verse 5. He says, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. Verse 6. It says, remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. In Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, when you read a very powerful rendition there, it says, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way and walk therein? It says, and ye shall find rest for your souls. So if you need rest, wishing it does not bring you to rest. Blindly desiring rest does not bring you rest the bible says there is a path that you must find he calls it the good way then he says walk therein and you will consequently and inevitably find rest for your souls hallelujah i have taught and you have heard me teach many many times that god is a god of patterns please write it down if you're writing god is a god of patterns god is a god of patterns what is a pattern a pattern is a pathway, a methodology, a predefined pathway that leads to a spiritual outcome. It's called a pattern. And the entire journey of the believer as far as manifesting possibilities is a blend of patterns and the corresponding glories that follow. Listen carefully. So for every dimension of glory that the believer's life should capture and express, there is a spiritual pattern. Another word for a mystery, another word for a pathway. There is a spiritual pattern that leads to definite outcomes that we call glory. Are we together now? Every possibility in the kingdom, listen carefully, every possibility in the kingdom is a product of understanding and working in keeping with certain spiritual patterns. God does not leave the manifestation of the glory of God to guessing. There are exact spiritual patterns that produce exact outcomes. Now, when the believer is laced with all kinds and all levels of ignorance, you will find out that number one, your life will be bankrupt of glory or number two, your life will produce dimensions of glory that are not predictable. So you may stumble across certain results, perhaps results that come from prophetic decrees. So a decree is made over your life and that week becomes a week of favor and then it ceases because the real pattern that controls that outcome has not been grasped. This is the product of, this is the, 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 the call for mastery. Mastery brings you in a position where you no longer fear your results because you have studied the pattern that leads to that outcome. Are we together now? God is a God of pattern. When you go to meet a tailor, look up please. You meet a tailor, one who perhaps is responsible for your, your clothes. You show that tailor something that you want no matter how complicated the design is. Sometimes you are even afraid whether the man can do it and he laughs. He says, I understand. He knows how to produce that result. Why? Because as complicated as that outcome is, there is a pattern. If you are not a tailor, it will remain a mystery. The assignment of the training school is to demystify that mystery. Are we together now? When you go and meet a medical doctor, especially a consultant, while you are describing your cases using all kinds of, uh, you know, limited expressions, all he's looking for are patterns because there are patterns that can reveal to him that this is this. Sometimes the patterns may require to take specimens and then to test further. But the whole idea is that through the power of patterns, many lives have been preserved, medically speaking. There is a pattern that leads to influence. There is a pattern that leads to working in the supernatural. There is a pattern, listen carefully, that makes you an exceptional leader. There is a pattern that leads to wealth and abundance. A pattern for speed, a pattern for deliverance. Your assignment as a believer is to remain ever open to bring together by the, the ministry of a teaching priest and in partnership with the spirit. Every service is supposed to be an exposition of spiritual patterns. So that if and when you have been around a house of God for a while, where the word of God is taught with, accurate, with accuracy, there you may not know everything, but at least we should see commendable results in your life by engaging patterns. Are we together? Now watch this. I'm holding a mic here, and there is a system to put this mic on. When I push this down, Then it comes back. I switched it off. Now, the, the mic does not care who manipulates it. The moment you engage the pattern that offs the power, it offs. Am I right on that? It does not ask you whether you are an American. It does not ask you whether you are Russian, whether you are European, whether you are Nigerian. If the mic is off, it is not because of any tribal sentiments. 
So you can hold this mic with such profound potential to amplify your voice and yet you may not be heard. And you see, it is dangerous to not produce results for a long time, I have taught you, because your, the absence of your result produces another kind of theology. When, you, when someone has to learn God through the lens of your life, what part of God will be misrepresented? If someone has to use your life as the only template to learn God, if your life were the only Bible to be read, are we going to read John in your life? Are we going to read Proverbs in your life? For some of you, the only part in your life may be Ecclesiastes. You will rob us of knowing that there are other chapters. My assignment is to stretch you and to show you, listen, that you do not have to be afraid of results. Results are exact products of patterns. Are we together? Yes. Moses in Exodus chapter 33, Exodus chapter 33, we'll read verse 13, then we'll go to verse 18. Moses was crying unto God. Verse 18 was a cry to experience the glory of God. But most people do not know that the request started from verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, it says, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. Do you know what he was saying? In other words, I, I need to lead these people properly, but the problem is my convictions and my personal results, and I know that the glory of God upon me would affect their loyalty. So show me your way. Now verse 18. 33 and verse 18 and he said I beseech thee show me your glory you will never experience the glory of God in any aspect of your life until you study carefully the spiritual pattern connected to that please I want you to follow carefully and believe what I'm telling you your life will remain an unending wonder once you master the patterns of the spirit so when the devil wants to rob you of the glory of God he does not fight the glory he fights your access to the patterns of the spirit are we together in John chapter 8 and verse 32 Jesus now comes in the New Testament and he's teaching us and he said "Ye shall know the truth he calls it the truth he says and the truth that you know shall make you free that the truth has liberating power in other words if you are bankrupt of the truth you can remain in bondage amplified says that that you shall be unquestionably free in certain renditions in John 17 17 John 17 17 it says sanctify them by your truth thy word is truth go back to KJV sanctify them through your truth it says thy word is truth so when the Bible talks of truth he means access to the Word of God ignorance is a very dangerous cancer worse than the medical diseases that plague people ignorance Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet was speaking by the spirit and lamenting said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge he says because thou hast rejected knowledge I will also reject thee that thou be no priest to me seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God I will also forget thy children in Psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7 very popular scripture here they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says I have said ye are gods and all of you not some of you not the prophets among you not the apostles among you all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes ignorance is a dangerous cancer in this kingdom hallelujah in fact, in Luke chapter 11, I believe, um, verse 35, it should be Luke 11, give us 35. Jesus said, take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Do you know what he's saying? That means you can carry a body of information. It may even be spiritual truth and you hope that you are carrying the truth. If it is the truth, it has liberating power. Isn't it interesting that there are many believers who carry a backlog of all kinds of knowledge using all sorts of references. But in the face of real life situation, they are not able to produce victory. If it does not produce victory, it is not the truth. The truth sustains the power to bring victory to the believer. And let God be true and every man a liar. Are we still together? It says, take heed that what you call light that means I can carry a revelation and be shouting Rema for years and yet your life does not capture the corresponding glory did you know I wish I had something a biro or a stick or something give me your drumstick my watch this ladies and gentlemen this is a drumstick someone can deceive me into believing that this is a mic and I can sincerely believe that this is a mic am I right on that now the problem is not my believing the problem is that I believe a lie 
So I can hold that mic confidently in front of you, coming from many years of indoctrination. I have been taught that this is a mic. It's just that it was designed in a way that looks like a drumstick. So I can call the whole world and say, come and see how loud this mic can be. The only thing or the only issue here is that my believing was onto a lie. So he's saying, take heed so that what you have been calling Rema, take heed so that what you have been saying, this is revelation. Does it stand the test of time and does it produce the character of glory? Many of us have been holding things that look like what we think they are, but they really are not. You've been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of prosperity, but it's not showing in your life. You have been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of longevity. This is the secret of excellence. Listen, if it does not produce the glory connected to it, it is not that light. It is not the truth. Are we together now? So back to this example, I'm holding a drumstick and now you imagine that I now add pride to this ignorance. So that when you are lovingly coming to call me to say, listen, you've been holding this for five years, but I want to, with every sense of love, let you know that this is not a mic. This is a drumstick. And I say, no, my mentor told me, or a spirit told me, that anything that looks like this with a pointed end is a mic. What if he was wrong? Listen, we're not discussing the subject of transformation, but I was teaching our school of ministry students, I think someone asked a question, and I was teaching them that when you come to the school of transformation, there are two dimensions to followership that leads to transformation just for your knowledge the first level is called follow them so god mandates that you follow human models are we together models whose lives have captured results enough to inspire you but the greater dimension is looking onto jesus that means you now come to the awareness that even the models as best as they are can be limited that they are also students in the school of the spirit they are just students that have had the privilege to go ahead of you so a time will come where both the lecturer and the students stand at a loss it is only the god of heaven that can show mercy at that point are we together now so that your followership may look like you are following a man but that beyond that man you are always verifying that that man is following the christ so in in experience you are not just looking on to men you are looking on to jesus that's how you get holistically transformed I can love you with all my heart and not mean to deceive you but i may have an accumulation of inaccurate or blatantly wrong knowledge and i may communicate that error to you with such passion and i hope not with pride and you receive it in honor to jesus and in honor to me as his servant except that when you act out that wrong information the corresponding glory that should follow does not follow are we together thank you now your rod is anointed <laughs> no 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 don't don't worship it hallelujah you know believers this is still part of the things i'm saying now somebody can go and hang put a rope on that thing now no it was just an example if we're together say amen. amen so the bible gives us a word of caution and this is a message really to us all but it extends to the body of christ it's important that in this season we are careful and unashamed about examining that which we call light is it true light I love the way the Bible puts it. It says that was the true light that lighted every man, meaning there are false lights. You don't have to be a wicked person to bring deception. You can be sincere, but the lights that you carry, the Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith. Is that in your Bible? It says they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. The person does not have to be demonized. The person does not have to be bad, but you can teach something that is inconsistent with the character of God. It will still bring destruction to God's people. Are we together my greatest if i have any fear at all in my life it is this that i do not examine my life at a point and find out that what i have been calling truth especially that which i've been proposing to god's people is now discovered that is a lie so i continue to examine myself even whilst i teach are we together now yes but i can tell you by the authority and integrity of scripture forget about the manifestation of the glory of god in your life if you do not study the patterns of the kingdom Let's go to the kitchen now. Many of you do well in the kitchen. You know how to cook all kinds of things. Continental dishes, local dishes, some of you. Are we together? Am I right on that? And then some of you are so good that, you know, we call you chefs and all of that. And like I've always told you, when you meet somebody who is professional, all you need to do is describe your end product. Tell them this is the picture of water. I saw this. Can you produce this? And they smile with the confidence of a good student and say, get out of my kitchen. Give me time. And sometimes what will tempt you back to the kitchen is the aroma that is a testament of mastery. Are we together now? 
and now you are tempted to come back and say what in the world is going here and they tell you your meal is ready but imagine a very sincere relative a sincere brother maybe your husband who has who has not got the knowledge of these mysteries and these patterns in the kitchen even if he's an anointed person a, a preacher now you love the person there are we together for instance me you know what I'm going to do I will do what I know to do pray I will pray first because the Bible says any man afflicted that thing there is not that is not a test that's a trial for me are we together but the point is that there is no glory until there is an understanding of patterns if you understand this half of your issues are solved because all you need to do is write the various areas in your life where the glory of God has not yet been revealed and then you will take responsibility like a mature believer that you are or becoming are we together you now get back and say there has to be an explanation as to why in spite of the prayers and the prophetic decrees it looks like the curse is still at work in this family is it that God is powerless there has to be an answer do you know there is nothing I know that pleases God like brokenness mixed with a sense of responsibility Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15. Here's what the Bible says. The labor of the foolish. The foolish here not being an insult is a description. Bankruptcy of knowledge. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. That means there is no sparing. Provided you are not interested in going for revelation. To understand the patterns, the ways of God. It says it will weary every one of them. Because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Not because there is no city. Because you know it not how to go into the city. Now, there are sincere men and women of God who love Jesus with all their hearts. But they have not learned the ancient patterns and the mysteries that make ministry work. To command results with the dignity of kingdom integrity. There are many people whose assignments are influence dependent. And yet they do not know the patterns that can make a generation loyal to you. It is dangerous to understand your assignment but not know and, or have the tools that will help you to be effective. In this kingdom, please write, in this kingdom, authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God. In this kingdom, authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God. When you know the ways of God, or you may call it the patterns, the spiritual patterns that are allocated for the outcome you desire, then you are ready to command authentic results. That in this kingdom, authentic results are built upon the revelation of the ways of God. I wrote something down here that I want you to please listen to very carefully. Action in ignorance is not faith. Action in ignorance is not faith. Respectfully speaking, there are many teachings on faith that just emphasize action. Action is the later part of faith. The foundation of Bible faith is revelation knowledge if you act in ignorance for instance back to my mic example let's assume that i'm now given the mandate to switch this mic on i can play with it around sincerely so i can knock the mic i can jump around it i'm taking action but it's in ignorance none of those actions will bring it will switch it on so if i before you take action you must verify that you are acting with sufficient knowledge let me give you an example of what many people do in the body of Christ. Please look up. You can choose any issue of concern whatsoever and you can literally act out a variety of action steps that the average believer would take. For instance, let's use a general example. A person or a family that is going through very tough financial seasons. You can honestly ask them, not for mockery, but just to help. So what have you done about this situation? The first thing they will tell you is, I've done everything I know how to do. And that's the truth. But what did you do? They will say, I prayed. They will say, I fasted. Not wrong. But the patterns that produce lasting wealth in the economy of the kingdom is not just dependent on these two. Are we together now? And you tell them, what else? They say, I begged an uncle, a wicked man who has all the money to solve this my problem he did not give me. What else did you do? I said I would try one business or the other and it still did not work. Now, mark this student in light of the knowledge you know now. This student will barely pass that exam. Because although there is a lot of dissipation of physical and emotional energy, the truth is that he's acting in defiance with the authentic patterns that make the blessing manifest even financially. So if you want to help this man, the key is not just to give him capital to go and start business. You've only recycled another pain. Are we together now? 
if you really want to help this man you have to go back to Isaiah 61 to preach the gospel to the poor it will look like an insult does the poor need help or need preaching so you now begin to give this person a new orientation hallelujah a family that has been bankrupt of victory in terms of you know their spiritual liberty everyone in that family tied down by curses and yokes you ask them what have you done about it sincerely they will most likely answer this way i've gone to every prayer house they will even list it i've met this man of god in fact here is the photo he snapped with me to tell you that i i, I really met him so why has the situation not changed do i know how do you help this man now every time he or she is studying their bible they will find it written here that where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty and their experience cannot change this reality no let god be true and every man a liar so for that person the moment you find out you've done all you know to do and your situation does not change it's time to start re-examining the patterns upon which your actions are based are we together I hear that there's a, there's a popular saying that doing the exact same thing and, ex, ex, and expecting another kind of result is one definition of insanity. I think I agree. When your actions do not lead to the results, it is not just a faith problem. It is a knowledge problem. You are acting on wrong or inaccurate information. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Please write it down. Action in ignorance action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results that means the first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge revelation not action the first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge revelation knowledge What kind of knowledge? A thorough understanding, I wrote here, of the patterns allocated for the specific spiritual outcomes. A thorough understanding of the patterns. A thorough understanding of the patterns allocated for specific spiritual outcomes. Once upon a time in my life, I didn't walk in this level of spiritual power. Why? Because the level of spiritual understanding that sponsors this power. I have taught you here. Please look up. When you read the book of Revelations, the Bible says, Worthy is the lamb that was slain and all of that. Uh, or he said, Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. He's worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And then he said, I looked at the throne and I saw a lamb as though had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. Notice seven horns and seven eyes the eyes there talks of revelation the horns there talk of authority so for every horn there is an eye connected to it seven horns seven eyes if you have only two eyes two dimensions of revelation you will only have the corresponding authority that matches your level of revelation seven horns seven eyes seven horns seven eyes hallelujah leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 the Lord was speaking to Moses, commanding him now. He says, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. He says, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. In genuine pursuit for spiritual power, I began to explore the materials of people that I thought I saw the workings of the Spirit in their lives to a very commendable degree. And I started searching, reading through their books and reading through their stories. All that I was looking for were patterns. Listen, every time you study the lives or the works of great people, don't just be carried away by the parables and the stories and the similitudes. Make sure you are sensitive enough to deduce patterns. The power is not in the story. The power is not in the parable. That's why Jesus would give parables, but hidden within those parables were patterns. Those who heard it just went back, nodding their heads. They had been enlightened in terms of, you know, from a, a literary standpoint. But the disciples will come and say, what is the hidden meaning of this? And Jesus will begin to explain. The sower is this, the seed is the word of God, and so on and so forth. You have not really benefited from any material until you deduce from that material the pattern connected to the glory. Let me repeat myself again. That you have not been blessed by any material until you can deduce from that life or that material the pattern that reveals that glory. I remember years ago watching Benny Hinn minister and such display of the glory of God upon his life. Miracles, signs and wonders. I would watch Reinhard Bonke of blessed memory. I would watch um, 
Billy Graham, minister in his crusades, and he would just come up the stage just casually, and for the next one hour, you were spellbound by the level of intellectual acumen, the intelligence, the, his presentation of the gospel was so compelling. You would watch the people, and, and those days, at, at least as far as I watched, you didn't have instruments playing like, you know, the Pentecostal charismatic circles would do. There would be pin drop silence, and while he's talking, you would almost think the people were ignoring him until he made the altar call. You would see people get up, just walk like something was pushing them. I said, what kind of grace is this? He did not seem to perform many miracles as I know and as I saw, but my goodness, the compelling power of the gospel. And I said, I desire this grace. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. I saw great fathers like Kenneth Copeland or our Roberts. They spoke about the healing power of God and they spoke about his ability to prosper a man, to match the wealth of nations. It looked like they were joking, except that their lives proved it. You study the story of Oral Roberts, now the university stands as a monument. An eternal signature that a man of faith walked upon the earth you would watch his crusades where he would lay hands upon thousands of people and you would record miracles as though they were stage managing it I said no this glory must have a pattern behind it don't just admire the possibilities that come from the life of a believer you must reach back and find out what spiritual pattern has been found I watch men like RW Shambach these were men who walked mysteriously in dimensions of power you study their videos and their materials, you would see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. In his popular words, he would shout and say, don't touch that dial. And the miracles, the manifestations, you would hear of fingers that were amputated, growing back. Do I talk of Charles and Francis Hunter? Men who trivialized the healing. They, they brought mastery to the healing ministry. They brought, they brought a scientific component to healing. They would teach a particular dimension of healing and line up the people who had that case. Literally pulling people out of wheelchairs like child's play. The things that are written for time, the Bible says they are written for our learning. I watched Benny Hinn pile up stadiums, pile up auditoriums in the name of the Lord. If you heard that Benny Hinn was coming to your area or Reinhard Bonke, I had the privilege to be in at least one or two of his meetings and his last and final and arguably about his largest meeting that happened in Lagos. I mean, you, I watched Benny Hinn. My dad those days used to get, you know, the, 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 the cassettes of his crusades. It was from him that I saw that evangelism by fire, that fire would come upon something and consume it physically without you setting it up. Ah. These were not things I was told. I had the privilege to be in at least one of his major crusades. I saw a display of the power of God from that man almost like he was doing nothing. And yet I watched, respectfully speaking, other people and you would see the energy being dissipated, begging God to move. The moment the axe head is blunt, be ready to dissipate energy without results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then do I talk of our own patriarchs in this nation? Men like Apostle Babalola. You read about these people, you will think they were exaggerations. These were careers of potent glory and power. Did not have the best of secular enlightenment and education, but my goodness, these men in their, in their wild quest for God, they stumbled not everything, but what they caught, they really caught. Hallelujah. I study a lot on the history of the church of, of God in Nigeria, you know, generally. And I mean, some of these men, some of the prophets past that have joined the cloud of witnesses, you step within their vicinity and they x-ray you. Men who laid hold on eternal life. Dimensions of the spirit. Hallelujah. You would go to their crusade grounds and you would marvel at the manifestation of the hand of God. That if they told you that these men were once alive, you would think they were parables. Can I tell you, every dimension of glory that seems missing in the body of Christ is not missing. Because the glory is a reaction. It is that we need to trust God for grace to find the patterns. There are patterns. Can a man prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity? Yes. But have we not tried and tried and tried and it did not work? And you know, we have, respectfully speaking, anybody who catches whatever small, at least they share the little that they know. But let me tell you, there has to be a higher dimension of revelation, a body of truth that is now organized. 
Are we together? Many people have done it in the personal development industry. Many have done it in the secular. We have books. They have been able to use statistics to study success, different dimensions of success. In fact, just to talk a bit on that, when you, when you study the story, many of you would know him now in, um, as we know in the business world or in the world of leadership generally. You hear about a mysterious name called Napoleon Hill. That man was a prodigy of Andrew Carnegie. And Andrew Carnegie, together with some of the world's successful people at that time, Andrew Carnegie called him, history would tell us, and told him that there are many people dying. The wealthy people were dying with fire in their bones and not sharing their secrets. And nobody has been able to compress the things that they knew that brought their results. And he mandated Napoleon Hill. What the book that you know, you know, some of his books and materials were, they were the end product of his personal research. He was given letters of introduction to go to everybody in the then world who had attained a commendable level of success and to interview them then to piece together the principles that produce an excelling life. That's what brought books like Think and Grow Rich and a number of his other books that today have built many conglomerates across the globe. There is no respectable leadership institute, financial institution that does not pay honor and respect to these materials. And a few people like Robert Slayer now alive and other great people, they, they, they were able to piece together a number of their materials. But I submit to you, the body of Christ needs to come to a higher level. We need to be able to distill these factors with precision and add intelligence to it. If we intend for these dimensions of possibilities to be widespread across the body, it does not have to be shielded like a cult. What does it take to live a long life? What does it take to be prosperous? What does it take to dislodge the entities of darkness that, try the, that tie the destinies of men down? What does it take to rise to a position of influence? This is why the Lord gave us teaching priests according to Jeremiah 3 and verse 15 that I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart that they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Are we together? So taking actions in ignorance will not produce the outcomes that we desire. 